Gospel of Luke, chapter 22. The feast days, Luke 22, 1, KJV. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. The feast of unleavened bread, the feast Passover and unleavened bread go together over an eight-day period as in the story of the Exodus from Egypt. After Passover, the children of Israel were in a hurry to leave Egypt before Pharaoh changed his mind again. God commanded Israel to make unleavened bread for the journey as they had to make haste and had no time to wait for the yeast to cause the bread to rise. Plus, yeast represents sin in the Bible, and they had to get all of the yeast out of their houses. The feast was designed to remind Israel to get the sin out of their life and country. It was so they could be a holy nation fit for God's use. Luke 22, 2, KJV, And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people, for they feared the people. Here we have the chief priests and the scribes plotting to have Jesus killed in private so the crowds wouldn't riot and kill them. Luke 22, 3, 6, Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Then entered Satan into Judas. Satan possessed Judas Iscariot and he inspired him to betray Christ, but only in the absence of the multitude. Surnamed Iscariot. Iscariot is a blending of two Hebrew words, ish for man and karyoth. Karyot, it means a man of karyoth. Judas was from the city of Karyoth in the land allotted to Judah, being of the number of the twelve, the twelve apostles to Israel, and he went his way. The leaven in the group had now left the Passover meal to betray Christ and covenanted to give him money, thirty pieces of silver. Zechariah 11.12 KJV And I said unto them, If ye think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. Matthew 26, and said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. Luke 22, 7 to 13. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto the, to the goodman of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber, where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. And they went and found, as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. The Passover must be killed. Did Jesus already have this Passover meal pre-planned with the homeowner? Most likely it was the house John Mark grew up in. I don't believe so. Jesus is all-knowing and knew the person would let his disciples use the room. Secondly, the room was only furnished. Peter and John had to go make all the preparations for the dinner. If the man were told so in advance, Jesus would not have had to tell Peter and John to do so. The guest chamber, the word is that same Greek word used for an inn. Mark 14, 1 to 4 and Luke 2, 7. A large upper room, probably the same room mentioned in Acts 1, 13. Luke 22, 4 to 16 KJV. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Before I suffer, Jesus Christ fulfilled the prophecies of him being the Passover at his first coming until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. What is the it that is fulfilled in the kingdom? The it refers to eating with the disciples for the last time this side of the kingdom. The only thing that happened after the first Passover that didn't happen after Christ's crucifixion is the judgment upon the Gentiles, like it happened to Pharaoh and Egypt's army. Luke 22, verse 7, 18, KJV. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. The cup, this is not referring to his blood, but it is a cup that went with the Passover meal. The Lord's Supper is something that took place at the Passover meal. 
It was not the Passover. We are not to have a Passover meal when we have the Lord's Supper today in the body of Christ. We are not Israel under the law of Moses. Israel's feasts are Israel's feasts. The feasts were prophetic pictures about events that will happen in the life of the nation of Israel. Israel is in a prophetical time out today, and we are not required to participate in Israel's feasts. Jesus informs the believing remnant in Israel of the significance of the Lord's Supper. Take this and divide it among yourselves. It wasn't for unbelievers. The kingdom of God shall come. This is speaking about the kingdom of heaven coming down to the earth after the tribulation period. Matthew 4, 17 KJV. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Luke 22, 19, 20, and he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. This is my body which is given for you. If you read the other gospel accounts, you will notice that Jesus gave himself a ransom for many. But in Paul's epistles, he says that Christ died for all, all the world, Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. 1 Timothy 2, verse 6, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. That is part of the mystery program of revelations given unto Paul. The fact that Christ died for the world was not made known before the cross. Likewise, also the cup after supper. This is the same cup that he previously told his disciples to divide up among themselves that we just read about in verse 17 of this chapter. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. A testament could not be established without the shedding of blood. Hebrews 9, 11 to 18, KJV. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead, Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon, neither the first testament was dedicated without blood, Luke 22, 21 to 20 JV, but behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table, and truly the Son of Man goeth as it was determined, but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. The Son of Man goeth, Christ had to go to the cross for you and me, But woe unto Judas who betrayed the Savior. The cross had to happen to pay for the sins of all mankind, but Judas didn't have to be the betrayer. His punishment will be severe as the pronouncement of woe unto that man indicates. Luke 22, 24 to 30, KJV. And there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. And he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief as he that doth serve. For whether is greater he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serveth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. My temptations, the things Jesus suffered while he was with them, I appoint unto you a kingdom, the kingdom that was appointed unto Israel, but that appointment was conditional upon their faith. No faith in the Messiah meant no kingdom for them. 
It didn't matter who their father was or if they were circumcised in the flesh, only if they were circumcised in the heart. Luke 22, 31, 34. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. What was the result of Jesus' prayer? It held back the desire of Satan to control Peter. Prayer changes things. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. This happens after the resurrection. Remember when Jesus said to feed my sheep? That was the other apostles. He also said to feed my lambs. That was newer believers. John 20 and 15 it's in KJV. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Luke twenty two thirty. 30. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said, Nothing. Lacked ye anything? No, because God supplied all their needs. This does not work today because the kingdom is not at hand today as it was then. Matthew 4, 7 to 23. Luke twenty two thirty six cages, then said he unto them, but now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip, and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Verse fifty one. Luke twenty two thirty seven thirty eight. For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, It is enough. Isaiah 53, verse 12, KJV. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Mark 15, 28. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. Christ had to go to the cross, and he was informing his disciples of this again, but they had a hard time justifying that with what they thought the Messiah should do. Here are two swords. Peter would later use one of them to cut off the servant of the high priest's ear. Matthew twenty six fifty one. Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Luke twenty two thirty nine forty. Cain he came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Pray that ye enter not into temptation. They were to pray as Jesus taught them to pray in the Sermon on the Kingdom, Matthew six verse nine to thirteen, Luke twenty two forty one to forty two. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Remove this cup from me, the cup of his suffering. Matthew twenty twenty to 23. Luke twenty two forty three to 44, KJV. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. There appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. When Jesus had fasted for 40 days, the angels came and ministered unto him. Mark 1, 13, Luke 22, 45 to 46. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow and said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Jesus twice told his disciples to pray at that crucial time so that they would not be tempted to do the wrong thing. Luke 20 to 47 to 48, KJV. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? 
Son of Man with a Kiss, Psalm 2, 12 and 41, 9. One of the Twelve, the Twelve Apostles. Matthew 10, 1 to 5, Luke 22, 49, 51 KV. When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. Lord, shall we smite with the sword? Verse 36, the servant of the high priest. What a perfect person for Jesus to heal, the servant of the high priest. What stories he could tell his boss later on. Suffer ye allow. Luke 22, 52, 50, 53. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders, which were come to him, Be ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves. When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretch forth no hands against me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. This is your hour and the power of darkness. They wouldn't come after Jesus in broad daylight at the temple because there were many eyewitnesses who would have not appreciated their tactics against the peaceful Jesus. They wanted Jesus killed and they had concocted their evil plan so as not to be interfered with by any of Jesus' followers. Acts 26, 18 KJV. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith is in me. Colossians 1, 13 KJV. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? I know him not. Luke 22, 54, 62. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Verse 34, Luke 2, 60 v. And the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. And when they had blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Prophesy, who is it that smote thee? And many other things blasphemously spake they against him. Jesus knew the end from the beginning. How else could he know Peter's actions before he ever did them? Peter should have stayed awake earlier and prayed. Blasphemously spake they, they spake words mocking him and who he claimed to be. Luke 22, 66 to 71. And as soon as it was day, the elders of the people and the chief priests and scribes came together and led him into their council, saying, Art thou the Christ? Tell us. And he said unto them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I also ask you, you will not answer me, nor let me go. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Then said they all, Art thou then the Son of God? And he said unto them, Ye say that I am. And they said, What need we any further witness? For we ourselves have heard of his own mouth. The Son of Man shall sit on the right hand of the power of God. Jesus was claiming that he would fulfill Psalm 1 shortly. Art thou then the Son of God? The chief priests and scribes link the title of the Son of Man to the Son of God. The Gospel of Luke chapter 23, the scapegoat. Luke 20, 23, 4, KGV, and the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ the King. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the King of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. Thou sayest it. His kingdom was not of this world at that time. It will be in the kingdom. If Israel would have been in a right relationship with God at that time, they would not have had to pay tribute to anyone, 
nor have Rome ruling over them. I find no fault in this man, John 8, John 18, 38, and 19, 4 to 6. Pilate and Herod, Luke 23, 5 for KJV. And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at that time. A Galilean, a region in the north. Herod's jurisdiction. Herod was over the region of Galilee. Luke 23, 8-11 KJV. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad. For he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Then he questioned with him in many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod, with his men of war, set him at naught, and mocked him, and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him again to Pilate. Herod, with his men of war, set him at naught. Herod's soldiers despised him, and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe. Matthew twenty-seven twenty-eight says it was scarlet, while John nineteen two says it was purple. 23, 12 to 18, and the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at enmity between themselves. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him, for of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas. No fault in this man, verse 4, John eighteen thirty-eight, nineteen, four 4 and 6, the son of Abba, the son of the father, Luke 23, teen, KJV, who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison, a certain sedition, a riotous crime against Rome. Luke 23, 20, 24, Pilate therefore willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why, what evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. Three times the religious leaders cried out for Jesus to be crucified. And three times Pilate asked Israel's leaders, Why, what evil hath he done? He pleaded to them that he found no cause of death in him. But the leaders wanted Jesus out of the picture. He was a threat to their monopoly on religion. These men were so far from the truth that they demanded a murderer be released and an innocent man be crucified. They were condemning their own future judge, the scapegoat. The verses regard the teachings of the scapegoat actually begin at the examination of Jesus by the high priests in the previous chapter, and they continue on with Pilate and Herod, where Jesus didn't answer them to fulfill. 53 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Luke 23 25 26. And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired, but he delivered Jesus to their will. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country. And on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. Simon a Cyrenian, a man from Cyrene, Matthew 27, 10, the law of the scapegoat. Leviticus 16, verse 5 to 10, And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering, and one ram for a burnt offering. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat, Jesus, upon which the Lord's lot fell, 
and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat, Barabbas, on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat, shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Right outside the temple where they would offer the sacrifices was the judgment hall, the prison, and also the high priest's quarters, all very conveniently placed so as to expedite the judgment. Barabbas and Jesus were the two goats that all the previous goats for 2,000 years served as a type or a shadow of. Barabbas and Jesus were both examined outside the gate, and the one named Barabbas was inspected and found guilty of murder and sedition. The other named Jesus was inspected, and nothing guilty of death was found in him. Jesus himself also said of himself, John eight forty six, Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? The writer of Hebrews said of Jesus, Hebrews four fifteen. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Jesus was the innocent goat that took the sins of the nation of Israel and of the whole world upon him, as the Apostle Paul would later tell us in his epistles, while Barabbas was the guilty one that was set free. Barabbas represents us. Jesus was punished for us who are guilty so that we might be set free. Second Corinthians 5.21 for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Crucifixion, Luke twenty three twenty seven to 31, KJV. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? Daughters of Jerusalem, Jesus quoted Isaiah to the women of Israel about what would happen during the time of Jacob's trouble while he was carrying the cross to pay for their sins. Isaiah 2, 19-21, KJV. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Skull. Luke twenty three thirty thirty 30, JV. And there were also two other male factors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left, criminals. The only Bible where you will find the word Calvary is the King James Bible. Luke twenty three thirty four V. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Israel's crime was reduced from first degree murder, of which there was no sacrifice for, to manslaughter, which means they didn't know what they were doing. They parted his raiment and cast lots. God doesn't do away with Israel forever because they did what they did in ignorance. Psalm 2018, they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. The king of the Jews, Luke 23, 35 to 40 KJV, and the people stood beholding. And the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. 
no sleeping in the grave awaiting resurrection as some teach, they would be enjoying being in paradise. Who really took Jesus' life? Luke 23, 44 to 46. And it was about the sixth hour and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. The sixth hour noon, the ninth hour, 3 p.m. To answer the question above, let's first take a look at the words of Jesus regarding his death and who it was that really took his life from him. John 10, verse 17 to 18. Therefore doth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. They cried out, Crucify him, but they did not kill him. The Romans drove the nails in his hands and feet, but that didn't kill him. Jesus laid his life down, and he would also raise it up again. When Jesus was ready to die, he died on his own terms, not Rome's or the Jews. It was our sins that made it necessary for Christ to have to go to the cross on our behalf. Luke 23, 47 to 49, KJV. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that site, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. And all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. Arimathea, Luke 20:51. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and a just. The same had not consented to the counsel and deed of them. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. A counselor, a wise leader of Israel, himself waited for the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God would have begun eight years from the time of the resurrection of Christ to sit on his throne until his enemies be made his footstool during the time of Jacob's trouble. The kingdom that Joseph waited for did not come at that time because Israel rejected their final offer of the kingdom given by Stephen. The kingdom was then postponed by God and a new dispensation was ushered in called the dispensation of grace, which was dispensed to the body of Christ by the apostle of the Gentiles after Acts 1.8, Romans 11.13. Luke 23, 52-53. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus, and he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. Isaiah 53, 9. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. The preparation in the Sabbath. Luke 23, 54, 56, KJV. And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. And the women also, which came with him from Galilee, followed after, and beheld the sepulcher, and how his body was laid. And they returned, and prepared spices, anointments, and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. That day was the preparation. That day begins every week on Thursday evening at sunset, and goes unto sunset the following day. When there were the feast days involved, however, then extra Sabbaths were added to that week, so there would be a high Sabbath along with a regular Saturday Sabbath. This required the preparation day be moved back an additional day to make room for the additional Sabbath that week. John nineteen thirty one, The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Good Friday is a myth. You cannot fit Jesus in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights between Friday evening and Sunday morning. Do not believe the lie that compromising pastors promote that any part of a day constitutes a day in Jewish. It does not. It had to be three days and three nights, period. The Gospel of Luke chapter 24 the resurrection. Luke 24, 1, 8, KJV. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, 
behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Luke 9, 22. The first day of the week, Sunday, two men stood by them in shining garments. These two men were angels. Matthew 28 identifies the first angel as the angel of the Lord, which rolled away the stone and had frightened the keepers. Mark identifies the second angel as the one that was inside the tomb and was identified as a young man in shining raiment. When you blend all four accounts of the story, believing each one complements the other, instead of thinking there are contradictions, then you see there are no contradictions if you take the time to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Luke 24, 9 or 10, KJV, and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. Mary Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, Mark 16, 9, Luke 8, 3, Mary the mother of James, Mark 16, 1, Luke 24, verse 12, KJV, and their words seemed to them as idle tales and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. For someone who didn't believe the women's words, Peter sure did dash out of the upper room rather fast. Sometimes when you hear something, you don't immediately process it completely. But after a few moments, things started to sink in, and Peter had to see for himself. Luke twenty four thirteen to 14 And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened, threescore furlongs. There are eight furlongs in a mile, Luke 24, 15, 24, KJV. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them whose name was Cleopas answering said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. Their eyes were holden that they should not know him. These disciples understood that the Messiah would redeem Israel. That was more than most in Israel. Understood it is more than most today understand as well. Luke 24, 25, 27. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. To enter into his glory, the death, burial, and resurrection are covered in numerous places in Moses and the prophets. The consequences of that event was not, however, the fact that a new agency would be created called the body of Christ, made up of Jews and Gentiles in one body, whose dwelling place is in heavenly places, was not known until it was revealed to the Apostle Paul, Luke 24, 28 to 31, KJV, and they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. 
And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And their eyes were opened. The disciples did not just recognize a familiar habit Jesus had when breaking bread that told them this was Jesus. The reason why they could not recognize him in the first place was because he didn't allow them to recognize him until that very moment, and then he disappeared. He disappeared because he was who he was, but he now had a resurrected body that could travel through walls and even through the spirit realm. It is not known where Christ went each time he disappeared, but most believe he went back to his place in the heavens before his next appointed meeting, leading up to his ascension 40 days after his resurrection. It was during those 40 days that Jesus taught his disciples things pertaining to the kingdom not the church. Luke 24, 32 to 39, KJV. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the 11 gathered together and them that were with them saying, the Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. They had seen a spirit, angel, Hebrews 1, 13, 14. But to which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Luke twenty four forty to 45 KJV. And when he had thus spoken, he shewed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of an honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. When he told the disciples of his crucifixion and resurrection earlier, he deliberately hid what he had said to them in them. Now he was bringing that memory back. Luke 9, 44-45 Let these sayings sink down into your ears, for the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. But they understood not this saying, and it was hid from them that they perceived it not. And they feared to ask him of that saying, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, Daniel 9, 27, and Isaiah 53, Luke 24, 47 to 49, KJV, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high, the promise of my Father. On the day of Pentecost, those believing Jews received the promise of Jesus' Father, which was the baptism with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in the tongues of the 16 different groups there about the mighty works of God. Luke 11, 33, John 1, 33, and 7, 37, 39. Endued with power from on high, that baptism with the Holy Ghost was also called being filled with the Holy Spirit. They had the Spirit poured out on them. It was only a temporary experience to empower them to do what they did on the day of Pentecost. They would pray to be filled numerous times afterwards because it was only a temporary filling. It was a taste of the powers of the world to come, the kingdom. Acts 4.31, Luke 24.50 to 50 PG. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. He lifted up his hands and blessed them 
Jesus blessed the little children that came unto him. Mark 10, 16. Jesus departed from the disciples both physically and visibly. He would return in like manner. Acts 1, 9 to 11. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Amen. The word amen is used at the end of a prayer or a sentence, never at the beginning. The word is the same Greek word translated verily, and it is always used at the beginning of a statement and never at the end of one. The end.